he calls himself a master barber. But David Foley is also a master of manipulation. He was such a smooth talker. Very good con man. He's a pro. He always spoke a wonderfully large game. For years, Foley has been grooming financial victims all over southeastern Wisconsin. He builds a relationship. He, he looks at somebody. He figures them out real quick. He created the illusion that he was a wealthy entrepreneur, driving luxury cars that other people paid for, and renting $400,000 homes he passed off as his own. He always had these addresses that were wonderful addresses, you know? Over in Elm Grove and, you know, Brookfield. It's an image Foley used to persuade investors. It's a done deal. I mean, the guy's affluent. Put your chin there and your forehead away for it. Brian Weaver is an optometrist by trade, but in 2007, he was focused on investing his savings in a hot new business deal. And that's when he met Foley. I funded everything, 100%. Weaver laid out more than $100,000 to open a sports-themed barbershop in Brookfield. Foley cut the hair, but it was Weaver who paid the bills. And before long, he says Foley started racking up personal expenses on a company credit card. Chiropractic purchases, a big screen TV, you know, just unbelievable things. You know, uh, uh, we were suddenly paying for car repairs, you know, $2,700 for a car repair without any bills, you know. When Weaver confronted him, Foley got a restraining order that barred Weaver from his own business. Oh my God almighty. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was just mind boggling. Turns out David Foley is a con man with a criminal record that dates back to 1980. He's been convicted at least 10 times for identity theft, fraud, and passing worthless checks. State of Wisconsin versus David Foley. But the most serious charges yet stem from events that occurred after he opened an upscale barbershop in Whitefish Bay. Bring your son along and his haircut is free. When Foley launched the new Sporting Cuts in 2010, he hired Lance Gordon to keep an eye on the books. He would always spend way, way more than was coming in. Gordon says Foley was more interested in recruiting new members for one of his many multi-level marketing ventures, selling energy drinks, weight loss coffee, and prepaid legal services. What do barbers do? They talk. What do people complain about? I don't have any money. I know a way you can make some. He, was, he had it down to an art. Foley took advantage of some of those recruits using their credit cards without their knowledge. But his biggest financial victim may have been the man who bankrolled the barbershop. I basically gave him all the money. Rick Beistra poured his life savings into Sporting Cuts in part because of false claims Foley made about a financial windfall that was coming his way. He wanted you to think he was good for the money. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. In 2010, Foley got a $136,000 settlement from the state for false imprisonment. But he's accused in federal court records of doctoring the settlement letter to make it appear he was due nearly 10 times that amount, then showing that letter to investors. He said, even if the barbershop doesn't make it, I've got a million, over a million dollars coming. So it was pretty much a no-brainer. Instead, Foley wrote a series of checks on accounts that didn't exist, some of them for as much as $10,000, and Bystra had to cover them. Uh, it was apparent that he was involved in what appeared to me to be a check kiting scheme. Milwaukee County Prosecutor Bruce Langraff has called Foley the quintessential confidence man with an insatiable desire for easy money. But even he could not have predicted what would happen next. I think you may have said when this comes out, it's going to be all over the news. In August of 2010, Foley is accused of sending this anonymous letter to the Fox 6 investigators, along with an unlabeled DVD. The disk contained a single folder labeled Andy Garrison Private Files. Inside the folder, dozens of images of child pornography. State investigators say it was part of an elaborate setup. He, um, uh, in effect, uh, tried to create the image that, that uh, Mr. Garrison, Andrew Garrison, uh, was um, uh, a possessor of child pornography, uh, and perhaps worse than that. Garrison was Foley's landlord for the sporting cuts in Whitefish Bay, and court records show Foley owed him $55,000 in rent, and Garrison was planning to testify against him in the check fraud case. Mr. Foley was intent on making me and the judge who sentenced him in the 2008 case believe that Mr. Garrison was not credible. His plan backfired. State investigators traced the child porn back to Foley, and soon after, two young boys came forward to say Foley 
had molested them. Sick. Evil. This man is, quite frankly, you know, the personification of the devil as far as I'm concerned. The news came as a special shock to Weaver, who still believed until recently one of Foley's tallest tales. And the fact that he has his own two sons. You know, he had two boys. Did you know that he doesn't? He doesn't have children. Those aren't his kids. Oh my God in heaven. For years, Foley had told his friends and business partners that he was a widowed father of two boys. At times, he introduced other people's children as his own. It wasn't until Bystra called Foley's brother in New York that he says he finally got the truth. And it took probably about 15 seconds for him to stop laughing. And he said, Dave's never been married. He has no kids. Oh my God, yeah. Oh, I had pictures of, of the boys with Macaulay Coughlin and such. Oh. All part of the scheme, apparently. Oh my God in heaven. Foley is now facing state charges of bail jumping and federal charges of producing child pornography and transporting a minor across state lines to engage in a sex act. Meanwhile, Rick Bystra is trying to pick up the pieces of his shattered dreams, struggling to tell his own kids why they can't afford life's little luxuries. You try to be strong when you're talking to them, but your heart, you know, bleeds, hurts and wishing he'd never met David Foley. He was a great barber, just was um, not a good person.